It's Sonny's Piano TV Show. Today, a very special All Steinway edition. Featuring master tuner and technician Ed Martin. A piano video tour of a magnificent Steinway Model O. Sonny's Piano Yoga Tips. And much, much more. And now, here's Sonny. Hi, I'm Sonny. I want to welcome you to Sonny's Piano TV Show. This is a TV show that's completely devoted to pianos, to music, to health and well-being, and to you. And we're taping this live here in our warehouse in Holbrook on Long Island in New York. And as usual, we have lots of new things for you today on Sonny's Piano TV Show. Our featured guest artist for today is the Steinway Piano. And we have lots of Steinways here at Sunny, so if you want to come down and try them out and play some of them, just call us up, make an appointment, and we'll turn you loose in here and you can have a piano experience. Pianos are such a remarkable example of human ingenuity and engineering. Uh, it's just miraculous how they create the sounds that they do and they give us feelings of uh, pleasure and happiness and joy in our hearts and our minds. And as you know, our motto is that everyone can play the piano. You don't have to spend years studying time signatures or learning how to read. You can just sit down, learn a few chords, learn the basics, and away you go. But today, we're featuring the Steinway pianos. And let me just give you a little background on Steinway. Uh, Steinway came to America from Germany in 1853. And uh, legend has it because the Northeast in America had the best wood to make uh, pianos out of. See, the older the tree is that you make the piano from, the denser the wood. And the denser the wood, the better uh, instrument it makes. So at that point in 1850, the wood here in the Northeast of America had not been chopped down numerous times and been regrown as had been the case in Europe. So here they were very old trees and they were able to season and age those trees and age that wood to make a remarkable instrument. So they came here in 1853 and through uh, a, a civil war, uh, two world wars, depressions, inflations, they're still here today making uh, masterpieces just as they did when they first came here. If it says Steinway on it, it's just made very, very well. And uh, we have 16 Steinways right now here at our warehouse in Holbrook on Long Island. And uh, each one is just remarkable in its own way. So what we're going to do today is uh, talk about the different pianos and uh, let you see me playing some of them. And we're going to start off with what I call a video splash of uh, several of the uh, Steinways that we have here at Sony's Pianos. So here it is. <laughs> And what do we have here? What do we have here? And what do we have here? Here to here? Here. My oh me oh my. A big piano. Another Steinway.
hope you enjoyed that. We call that a uh, Steinway video splash. So uh, we'll be bringing you more of those in the future. But now we're going to uh, talk a little bit about what makes a Steinway a Steinway. And uh, we're going to uh, show you a, a interview that we had with master uh, piano tuner and technician Ed Martin from here on Long Island. And Ed uh, goes back and is a bit of a Steinway uh, a connoisseur and a uh, Steinway specialist. Uh, he worked uh, in the Somer uh, Piano Company, which uh, Somers are also uh, great pianos for uh, many years. And then he went and set up his own uh, practice here in, uh, on Long Island. And uh, here's Ed talking about a Steinway Model A, which is a King Louis the 16th style that was custom made. And he's going to talk a little bit about the piano, and he's going to talk about Steinway. So here it is, Ed Martin. Thank you, Ed, yeah, for coming nice down. Thank you again. Yeah, Thank for, you. My for pleasure. Joining us here at Sonny's Piano Warehouse in, in uh, Holbrook, where we have this magnificent uh, instrument. And uh, so we wanted to talk a little bit about this. And uh, well, first of all, um, this is made in 1904. Yes. And uh, but it was originally a regular, uh, like a regular looking Steinway. With a standard leg, standard case. It was a cherry, and uh, it was delivered in the rough, which means that nothing was done to it except the case and the legs were in the raw. It was sent to a man called Charles uh, Cortell in New York, and he took it, he gilded it, he carved it, and he made it into a design called like Louis the Sixteenth. The, the case has been stripped and it's ready to be refinished. Right. And uh, originally, what did the case look like? It was green and all these, all this detail, was this all gold plated? Uh, it was green with gold. You can see the, the green. This is probably the one piece that still hasn't had much done to it, but it, it had, had gold on it and also the, it was green. It was At this point, we were trying to decide how we want to refinish it or even if, uh, if we f have a buyer for this, we can uh, refinish this, we can custom refinish this to match your motif in your home or, uh, or the, your furniture. So uh, that's uh, what we're in the uh, planning stage of this piano. Maybe we can look at some of the design on the side yes, here. Yes, it'd be very nice to come in and show what's been hand carved and the, 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 all the design all around the case. And the so talk a little bit about um, what's going on here. This looks like fruit. This looks like a strawberry over here. Probably more like a pineapple. A pineapple? Mm-hmm. That's pineapple carved there. And then over here, this looks like fruit in here too, on, on this side. This, is, uh, this looks like leaves, like a, uh, like a leaf. It's this has all been hand carved. There has molding on it, which is just a normal molding that, to uh -huh. give it more decoration. Uh, but this is all, it's just, it's just like a, a le uh, petals or a leaf. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got little fruit things here that look like berries on, the, on the, a vine. And, and the leg. This it's still has a lot of the green on it, but it had gold on it that has kind of peeled off. But it's the same thing. It's almost Romanesque. These are called fluting, this. And then even in the fluting, with the tape, there's little holes in here, or grooves, they have, again, every type of, you know, uh, inserted carved in there, too, so it's just not a straight fluting uh, design. And then over here, this whole case is a different uh, motif or change, and this runs all around the front and the whole side over there too. And of course, the, all the legs are symmetrical and look like that. This music desk, this is a, I've never seen anything like this, this ornate on a music desk. I mean, it's just beautiful. It also has the uh, little fluting on here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's like a Roman such column, detail. And yep. these are like flowers Roman or column, bulbs. Right. Like, and, mm -hmm. and each one is put in there and, you know, the extra, groove and the design here too. Yep. Even this prop stick, if I change on that, uh, <laughs> has been all carved and curved and uh, uniquely put together. The yes. action also has been replaced. It's, a, it's not 10 years ago, but it all has all complete Steinway parts. Okay. And, um, is, and I thought it repetitions and weapons, so, so mm -hmm. this has been replaced. It's, it's a really unbelievable piano in every aspect. It's really one of a kind and a collector's item at this stage. Did, um, the, so the, the original owner was an artist, and he purchased the piano, and, it, and then he created this case that he put over the original Steinway. This is a Steinway A six-footer, but uh, also this was rebuilt on the inside yes. uh, within the past uh, decade or yeah, so. Yeah, 20 years or so, 25. But it all looks new. It's yeah. always got new pins. New pins, new pin block, new strings, soundboard's been reshimmed. 
uh, regilded re plate, regilded plate, and uh, all the hardware was done on the inside. Okay. It ha the keys also were replaced, but much longer, or further back than 20 years. Right. So they had the color like the ivory, and they, they these are plastic, but they've turned nice and yellow. Uh, so Matt looks uh, like, an, like ivory. an egg. Looks, looks like, like an ivory. ivory. Yeah. And it goes in keeping with the Louis the Sixteenth. Okay. Now, when I was playing this, I, I, I got the feeling that I never got from the piano before. I always say that the, the case uh, on great pianos where the wood has been aged and seasoned, uh, the, the case becomes an extension of the soundboard, an extension Absolutely. of the piano. Yeah. And this, because I could feel the thickness of it, it was just like something totally different, even from a player's perspective, let alone that this is just a magnificent work of art. Why did I have that feeling from the heaviness of the wood? Well, any piano that made well, Mason Hamlin, Canabis, Chickering, Solmes, Steinways especially, when you play anything on a piano, it's the sounding board vibrates like the skin of a drum, but the drum itself can be, that's how they tune the kettle drums and also when you hit a piano, if you feel the case, it also is resonating and enhancing the tone and the sound. Right. So the more case, the bigger, the heavier, the bigger the sound. Right. And this piano, because of the extra weight on it, it it's overwhelming, right. it really is. Mr. Quartel put a birch superimposed on top of the original case, so it's probably double the weight of a normal A piano. I've seen other uh, King Louis the uh, 16th uh, styles, and uh, they, they, they go for well in, in the six figures. This um, design, how did he come up with this? He was a carver and a cabinet maker and a very talented person. Someone bought that at Steinway, and they selected him because he was renowned as doing that in those years, oh, and very well known, so it is custom made. In those days in Manhattan and New York, and we called the five boroughs, there were many piano companies. There was Steinway was there, Soma was there, Winter was there, Krakow was there, mostly Germans, because they're the ones that came over in the 1850s to 1900s, and they started the piano business and probably the beer business also in America. And there was a big association between the workers and the company. Uh, people came over because they, they were immigrants, basically, and they had to have a job, and factories were a good place for employment. And the men in, that really got into the field, they spent their life in those factories. And second generation, the time even to this day, has three generations, the same family. And why? Because they took great pride in what they did. They took their time. There was no robots. They were the robots. And they did better than the robot because they, it was no uh, babying. You did it right and you got advancement, but you learned. And they were tutored. They were... Uh, came in as apprenticeship and they stayed and many of them signed their names to the low key or the top key, the regulators, they were all hands on, just like a clock manufacturer. That's all gone today because uh, things are more robotic and things have changed. You could, not that they can't reproduce this piano because Steinway still has tremendous workers and they still do a very good job. But what's nice about it or different is that when it comes, I'm not st Sonny, he plays. I, I'm the inside man, he's the outside man. But when you play this piano and you just hit it, oh, oh, it's big, it's rich, it sustains for almost over a, mi a half a minute. It, the longevity of it is because of the weight and the wood and the birch and just the excellence of the piano itself. I hope you enjoyed that. That's Ed Martin from uh, Bayville on Long Island and he's, uh, he's just a delight and uh, a great guy and uh, a real, really very knowledgeable when it comes to pianos and Steinways. So now we're going to have uh, the uh, featured Steinway that we're here at Sony's for today's show and that's this Steinway Model O which uh, was made originally in 1902 and uh, the wood on this and the cast iron plate and the design are just incredible but we just had this piano totally rebuilt. We put in a new pin block, new pins, new strings, new soundboard, new Steinway uh, action, and we refinished it, and it just came out incredible. And we're going to play now the piano video tour that we just created about this piano. I hope you enjoy it.
what do we have here? I needn't say we have, but again, another Steinway for you today. I am Sonny with another Sonny's Piano video tour for you. And today we're featuring a magnificent, a awesome, a just sublime Steinway Model O. Uh, Model O's are just uh, magnificent design and uh, this one was uh, made originally in 1902 and it was rebuilt just in the past couple of months with the highest quality materials and with the highest quality craftsmanship um, that uh, you can uh, find today. And uh, this piano just came out incredible. And um, yeah, still a little stunned from playing it. And listen to the mid-range on this. Just sings beautiful. Now listen to the bass. These are new bass strings. All new strings. Nickel plated pins. New dampers. New Steinway New York action hammers. Boldock soundboard, Alaska Sitka Spruce, the best. New pin block. And we refinished it. There's a new hand rub satin finish, ebony finish. Our technicians regulated this to a constant stage level. It's very responsive, very quick. This would be a perfect piano for a recording studio or a performance space or a concert stage. This has a big sound. Steinway O's at 5, 10 and a half have a, uh, a very uh, re large resonance and it's also uh, very elegant and sweet. And if you're just looking for a very special piano as an individual to bring it to your family, if you're, uh, whether you're an advanced player, a professional, or you're just starting out, this piano will take you places you never dreamed possible. Said very responsive. I'm in love. Amongst the Steinways, this is one of my favorite, the Steinway Model O. So what again, what do we have here? We have a 1902 a Steinway Model O. Just about new everything except of course the cast iron plate and the, the case which is aged uh, and seasoned by the uh, Steinway company in 1902 where the Steinway family was still involved in the day-to-day -day operations. So these pianos are just magnificent. Each one is a masterpiece. We refinished the, the case, a hand rub satin finish, new Boldock soundboard, new pin block, new Steinway New York action, uh, hammers and shanks, flanges. Uh, we redid, we uh, painted the plate and a uh, new soundboard. And we have a nice decal on the soundboard too. So this piano is gonna make somebody very, very happy. I wonder who? Maybe, just maybe, it'll be you. I'm Sonny with another Sonny's Piano Video Tour for you today. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out our 
Steinway Gallery on our website at sunnyspianotv.com where we have lots and lots of Steinways, pre-owned, some original parts, some partially rebuilt, some totally rebuilt. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, now we're going to do uh, what I call a piano yoga tip. And when I say piano yoga, I mean it's a approach that I've developed that combines some of the elements of uh, yoga with uh, piano playing, particularly the breathing and the relaxation. So um, here we go. Okay, today's uh, piano yoga tip is what I call belly breathing. I'm going to show you how to breathe diaphragmatically. And you might be wondering why I'm holding this bust of Chopin. Chopin uh, was a renowned uh, composer, uh, pianist, and piano teacher. And it's uh, rumored uh, that he was always telling his students, suppleness, suppleness, before all else, suppleness when you play the piano. And what does he mean by suppleness? Well. I think what he means is that when you're playing, be supple, be fluid, be flowing, be relaxed, be loose. Because the more relaxed you are and the more fluid you are, the more uh, quickly you can play and the more flowing and uh, pleasurable your playing can be. So that said, what is belly breathing? What is diaphragmatic breathing? Uh, very simple. When people take a deep breath, very often they, they are high chest breathers. They'll do something like this. They'll inhale and exhale, right? In fact, you try. Put your hands on your stomach and see what happens. Inhale, stomach comes in, shoulders come back, exhale. This is how most of us breathe. This is not natural. This is unnatural. This is something that we developed along the way. If you watch uh, your pet or you watch children breathe, when they inhale, Stomach comes out and the chest expands with air. And when they exhale, stomach comes in. Watch again. You inhale, you exhale. This is natural breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. Inhale, exhale. Try this. Inhale, exhale. When we're born, we uh, breathe naturally this way. Animals breathe naturally this way. But as we're uh, society uh, conditions us, uh, we're taught to stand up tall, you know, hold your stomach in, stand up straight. Uh, boys are taught stomach in, chest out. Uh, girls are taught hold that stomach in. And even as we get older, we're very self-conscious of our abdomen and any excess, uh, what we think is extra weight on our abdomen, so we hold ourselves in. And now if you're holding yourself in, you can't really get that deep breath. So. This is diaphragmatic breathing. This gives you more air. This gives you more oxygen. This will help you to be more fluid, more supple, more relaxed while you play on the piano. So let's, let me demonstrate this again. So when you inhale, let your stomach come out. Then let the air come into your lungs. And when you exhale, contract the stomach. Again, inhale, expand, exhale, contract. Try to get this, inhale. Exhale. This is also very relaxing. This is a way to reduce tension and stress. When you find yourself under tension and stress, just start taking some slow, deep breaths, and you'll find you'll feel more relaxed and comfortable. Particularly, try to breathe from the belly. Diaphragmatic breathing, as I call it. Now, you might say, how do I apply that to piano playing? Well, here's a couple of things you can do. Before, when you first sit down, before you do anything, before you play a note, take three slow, deep breaths. Like this. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a hurry. And after you've taken those three slow, deep breaths, then begin playing. And every once in a while, while you're playing, take a full, deep breath. You don't have to stop, but just be conscious of your breathing and see if you're not breathing shallow. If you're breathing shallow, try to take some slow, deep breaths, and I guarantee you'll be more fluid, more relaxed, and you'll enjoy piano playing more. So. That's Sonny's piano yoga tip for today. Breathe, relax, and enjoy yourself. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. 
And now we're going to uh, end the show with some video splashes of some of the contestants that uploaded videos of themselves playing the piano in our recent Winter Free Piano Contest, which, by the way, was an outstanding success. And we had people voting from 52 countries around the world. We had over 30,000 votes, 62 contestants, and we'll be running another Sony's Piano uh, Winter Free Piano Contest very, very uh, shortly. But uh, here it is, uh, some very interesting videos of some of the entrants to our last contest. Remember, piano playing, it's healthy, it's healing, it's therapeutic, and everyone can play the piano. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.